Good morning and welcome. Please stand. you fill us with Easter joy. Rejoicing as your children, we look forward in hope to our moment of resurrection. Jesus is Lord, now and forever. Amen. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Barbara Severino. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, 
The God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death. But God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand, through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have the advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his, his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses and in the Prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. <coughs> Recently, I came across a picture in a magazine, and there was a, a picture of a bank, and over the entrance of the bank was a sign which said, to err is human, but to forgive is not our policy. <laughs> now, this is not a critique on banks this morning by any stretch of the imagination, but for many, ourselves included, to forgive maybe just isn't our policy. We prefer at times to simply hold grudges or to seek revenge, to retaliate. And probably it's not our policy to readily forgive because it's probably one of the most, if not the most, difficult thing to do in life. One woman wrote to Ann Landers a while back and said, I haven't spoken to my brother's wife in seven years. It would take the whole newspaper to tell you the entire story, so I'll just say she did me unbelievable dirt, and I've never been able to forgive her. Well, if we do forgive, a lot of times we add that little codicil to it. We'll forgive, but we never forget. Never forget the wrong. A little boy had disobeyed his mother, and his conscience was bothering him. And as he was trying to sneak to his room, his mother asked, Where are you going, Frank? To my room, he replied. I want to talk with God. His mother responded, You mean it's something that you can't talk to your mother about? And he said, Yes, it is. He said, I, I want to talk with the Lord, because you just punished me and scold me. But God listens to me, he forgives me, and then he forgets all about it. <laughs> no, it's not easy to forgive and forget. Forgiveness is not just lightly saying, let's kiss and make up. It's not simply saying, let's shake hands and forget about it. But all three of our readings today speak about forgiveness. And rightly so. After all, this is a vital and critical part of our Christian faith. And God's infinite forgiveness is so beautifully described in the well-known parable of the prodigal son. You recall that story. It's well known to everyone. The son wants his father's inheritance. He squanders his, all of his money, and then he devolves into resolute living decides to go back and seek a job with his father, but he's welcomed with open arms, a kiss, uh, sandals on his feet, and robes. And recently, I saw a cartoon about this particular parable. It was funny, probably lacking in content, but there is a picture of the father, exasperated, 
saying to his son, Look, this is the fourth time I've killed a fattened calf. Give me a break. How many of us feel like that at times? But in the Lord's Prayer, we also pray that God will forgive us in the manner and way in which we forgive others. That puts forgiveness at the top of the list when it comes for things that Christians should do. And part of our Christian living is to be forgiven. Another part of our Christian lives is to be a forgiver. And the question that I hear repeatedly asked is, how do I forgive, especially when I've been seriously hurt by someone? Many people, as you know, carry great burdens of guilt or remorse because they feel they can't bring themselves to forgive someone who has so deeply scarred them. Well, before I speak about what forgiveness might be, let me explain what forgiveness is not. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you're excusing the wrong that a person has done, nor are you pretending that it never happened. When asked for forgiveness, we sometimes say, oh, there's nothing to forgive, when nothing could be further from the truth. We might do this for many and varied reasons. Perhaps we we're afraid that the person who hurt us might know how deeply they wounded us and might try to do it again. Or if we pretend that we're, we can pretend that we're unaffected by what they've done and simply laugh it off. Or perhaps the wound is still too deep and painful that you're not ready to relive and rehash the pain moments and memories that have hurt you so deeply. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you are no longer hurting or that you're no longer wounded. It's hard certainly to feel like you've forgiven someone when you still carry the wounds. It's hard to feel that, you've, that you have forgiven them when you're still very angry, upset. You even see it when you hear the mention of their name. Remember, forgiveness is a decision that someone makes. Uh, hurting is simply a feeling. And the two are not the same whatsoever. You can hurt and forgive at the same time. After all, we cannot control how we feel. Can't control how we, when we feel tired, hungry, bored, listless. At the same time, feelings are neither right or wrong, good nor bad. It's only when we act upon them that they can become dangerous. And always remember, that forgiveness doesn't mean that you're forgetting. After all, as Christians, God, Jesus has called us to be wise. Yes, we're called to forgive, but that's not the same thing as bringing someone back into your circle of trust after they have betrayed you. And only once they have proven that they can be worthy of your trust should you welcome them back into your confidential circle. At the same time, we have some people have the mistaken idea that in order to forgive, we have to go back to the way things were before all of this mess happened. Well, that may be true, it may be possible, and it may be impossible, but that's okay. If a friend hurts or betrays your friendship, forgiveness does not necessarily mean that you will be friends again. It's possible, but not guaranteed. And this brings us to what forgiveness really is. It's forgiveness, and in granting forgiveness, you are recognizing that the person who has hurt you, offended you, they owe you something. They are, in a sense, indebted to you. Justice would demand that you, that you receive what they have taken from you. And forgiveness is made when you make the desire and the decision 
to release them from their debt. It's when you make the decision that you will no longer collect what they rightfully owe you. It's, in a sense, setting a person free. This too can be very difficult. Consider for a moment the person, or perhaps even the relative, who is continually reprimanding or correcting your children, telling them, if your mother or father would do their job properly, I wouldn't have to say or do these things. You seethe in silence. Your anger is intense. If knots in your stomach, you're on the verge of an ulcer. They, on the other hand, go on their merry way, thinking that they have done justice in the world, corrected the wrongs of today, and are ready for the challenges of tomorrow. What do you do? At the same time, think of you have just spent a lot of time and money trying to choose the right gift for a friend of yours who has just had a new baby. Later on, you hear that it has been said about your gift. It will be a cold day in, you fill in the blank, before I put that rag on my child. You confront the woman, offering to exchange the gift but she totally denies saying what she has spoken and tells you, you are mistaken and you better get your facts straight. What do you do? How do you respond? Well, justice certainly calls for retaliation and revenge. Jesus asks for mercy. Recall when the Pharisees caught the woman in the very act of adultery, they wanted to stone her to death. Justice says stoner, but Jesus simply said, go and sin no more. In the parable of the laborers in the vineyard, justice demands that the workers only get paid for the mere hours that they worked. Mercy is shown by paying them the full amount in generosity. There's a fine line between justice and mercy, how we interpret it, and how we apply it. Consider this story about a man who saw an ad in the newspaper for a practically brand new Porsche for the sale of $50. He figured it was a typographical error. 5,000 might be even an adjustable price, but at the same time far below what the actual value would be. But he hurried to the address where the car was the lady answered the door, and she assured him that the price was really $50. He went then to look at the newly, brand new, shining Porsche. He drove it around the block. When he returned, he gave her the $50 in cash, and the lady gave him the deed to the car and the necessary papers. Curiosity got the best of him, and he asked her, why she was selling this valuable car at the ridiculously low price. And she explained very clearly, the reason is, my husband ran off with his secretary. He left me a note saying, sell the car and send me the money. <laughs> I think that's a great answer. <laughs> I don't know whether Jesus would be pleased, but it's very practical. I'm not sure if it's just as tempered with mercy, but it is a good story. <laughs> However, in light of the gospel, recall the words of Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Yes, we are certainly called to be merciful people. And what is mercy? It's a love that responds to human needs in an unexpected and an unmerited way. This week, just for the fun of it, why not try to set someone free from their debt to you and surprise them with the gift of mercy? And in doing so, you just might be pleasantly surprised.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial of the Father, through him all things were made, for our sin. Let us pray. Inspired by the generosity of God's mercy, we offer these petitions for our Eucharist. That the Church will powerfully proclaim the salvation of the risen Christ to all the people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ's message of peace will remove the pain of war and violence from human hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our for an end to COVID pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all first responders, for members of the armed forces, for healthcare professionals, and all who risk their own lives for the protection of, of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill and suffer in mind, body, and spirit, may God grant them healing, strength, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they follow Jesus, the risen Lord, into the kingdom of light and peace, and especially for Barbara Severino, whom we remember at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you shower us with your mercy. May we share that gift with our brothers and sisters. Jesus is the Lord of life, now and forever. Amen. Amen. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Father, receive the gifts of your joyful church, as you have given us cause for so much gladness. Grant that these gifts may bear fruit in eternal peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty Father. For at this holy season, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Jesus is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of our world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. And so, filled with Easter joy, we sing your praise. <laughs> by sending down your Spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Leonard, our bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with all the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and all praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, look with kindness upon your people. You have filled us with Easter joy. May we share with our brothers and sisters the good news of salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God.